Now let's say I want to work on this object by itself. I've, I've modified it quite a bit and I don't want it associated with these other objects. I just want to very simply be able to hold down Alt and tap on it and just work on that object alone. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Uh, one way is you can go over here to Split and this is where you get into Subtool. So we're in the Tool menu here. We're going to scroll down so we're in the Subtool menu and now you're going to see Split Options. So this is different ways to split your object into its own subtool. If I go over here to Split Hidden, you're going to see it's grayed out, and that's because none of this is hidden. However, if I hit Q to go back into Draw Mode, hold down Control Shift and make sure we have Select Rectangle selected, because this has its own poly group here, if I hold down Control Shift and tap this one, you're going to see only this one is visible. If I Control Shift Drag, it'll invert that visibility. I'll just go ahead and Control Shift Drag again. And again, with this one visible, now this one is ungrayed. So you're going to see we can do a split hidden now, and that's going to simply split those hidden objects or those hidden polygons into its own subtool. So now you're going to see this object is in its own subtool. And if I tap down here, these ones are in their own subtool as well. So if we hold down Control Shift and isolate these to a split hidden, now these two are in their own subtool. And if I Alt tap here, all of these are in their own subtool. Now, if I do a group split, it's going to look at your polygroups and split those into completely different subtools. So if I want, I can hold down Control Shift, isolate these, just hit Control W, Control Shift Tab to bring everything back. And on this one, let's go ahead and mask, hold down Control and drag over these. Now hit Control W, that'll mask, that'll polygroup all of those as one. And then for the rest of these here, just isolate these, hit Control W with Control Shift for select rectangle, control shift tap to bring everything back. And now we have one, two, three poly groups. So now if I go over here to group split, it's going to split, say always okay. It's going to split these into one subtool. Alt tap this one, these are all one subtool. Alt tap this one, these are all one subtool because these all had the same poly group. So now we have split the similar parts and split the parts. Split the similar parts is going to be a little bit tricky with this one because they're all the same vert count. Essentially with split the similar parts, it looks at your vert count and goes, oh, all these are the same, so I'll go ahead and split those into one subtool. However, if I hit that now, it's just going to keep them all as one subtool because they're all the same poly count. So let's do this. Let's talk a little bit more about subtools here and how to add more. And also you're going to see a visible tool count here. If I crank this up, I can get a little bit more room in here. So now I can kind of scroll up and down so you can change your visible count in here. And if you want to have it default to say a visible count of 10 every time you open up ZBrush, go ahead and change that and then go up here to Preferences, Config, Store Config, and then your visible tool count will always be 10. So now previously we went over here to Append and we were able to append uh, anything we have in our scene. So I can append this guy we were sculpting. I can append any of these poly primitives. And the cool thing about this is if I grab a Helix 3D, for example, and append it, you're going to see it's going to automatically convert that to a PolyMesh 3D Helix. So you don't need to worry about hitting Make PolyMesh 3D. It'll do it automatically if you already have a PolyMesh 3D object and you append a primitive, it'll convert it to a PolyMesh 3D automatically. And when we did append, it appended it all the way down here in the bottom. However, if we Alt tap these three right here, or this subtool, and now we do an insert Helix 3D, it's going to put that Helix 3D right underneath the selected subtool. So to add subtools, you can either append or insert. One's going to throw it at the bottom of your stack, and one's going to put it right underneath your selected tool. So now we have this one here, and then we inserted a Helix 3D, and it's actually down here if we go into solo mode. It's right here in your world axis center. It's actually hidden by that very first cylinder that we made. So what we can do is we can merge these into one subtool. And we did that just briefly on one of our previous videos. But if I have this one above it and I have this one below it, if I choose this top subtool and then go down here to merge down, I'll go ahead and merge this top one onto that one. So we can say OK. And now if we go into solo mode, these are all part of one subtool. So let's do this. Let's hold down Control Alt, unmask the helix, hit W. Let's go ahead and move this helix right in between here. And now let's hold down Control and drag out a copy and then let go of Control and we'll just keep dragging out copies of that helix. Now if we Control drag again, you're going to see these are all one subtool or all one polygroup and these are all one polygroup. 
Again, if I want to, I can go down here to Geometry, I'm sorry, Tool, Polygroups, Auto Groups, and now they'll get their own polygroup. And again, I can hold down, I can hit W, Control Tap any of these, and select them and move them as I see fit. Now going back here to the split options, I already know if I do a group split, it's going to split all of these into separate subtools because they all have different polygroups. However, if I go to split the similar parts, ZBrush is going to look at the vert count of these and the vert count of these and go, okay, I'm going to split these into one subtool and these into one subtool because they had the exact same vert count. However, if I go down here to split the parts, and let's go back up to our Helix subtool here, if I tell it, and we still have Solo turned on, that's why we can see all of these just uh, individually as we click through our subtools here. If I choose split the parts, it's going to look through and anything that is all one contiguous mesh, and by that I mean this is one solid mesh, there's not pieces of it everywhere, it's just one self-contained mesh here, and they can be overlapping as well. If I hit W and then hold down Control alt or Control alt to unmask this, hit W, and again, I don't see the gizmo anywhere in my screen, so I'm going to Alt-Tap this one to move that pivot in here. And if I move this here and kind of overlap these a little bit here, and then Control-Drag, it'll still see this as one contiguous mesh, because at any point I can hit W, and then Control-Tap this, and then move it out, and it's still its own mesh. So even if you have overlapping meshes and Control-Drag, it's still its own one contiguous mesh. So if I go down here and I say, if I do split the similar parts, it's not going to do anything because they're all the exact same vert count. However, if I go down here to split the parts, anything that's not completely vert welded is going to split into its own subtool. So now if I scroll down, you're going to see we have one helix, two helix, three helix, four helix, all as separate subtools. So if we go out of solo mode here, you can see if I alt tap here, 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 and here, all separate subtools because those are separate parts. Now, of course, if I want to, I can choose this top subtool here and go down here to merge down, and I can just merge all of these together, go back into solo mode, and we're right back where we started. And then, of course, if you're like, oh, I just want to take this object into its own, just control shift tap it and then do a split hidden. And then if we go out of solo mode, we can hit W, and now we can just alt tap to reset our pivot or if we're not careful, we'll Alt-Tap another polygroup. So Alt-Tap here, hold down W, and then Alt-Tap this to reset our pivot, and then we can just move this out. So again, go through here. You can Alt-Tap a subtool. Alt-Tap a subtool to select it, and then if you have one selected, you can Alt-Tap on the object to reset the pivot, and then you can move these things out.